Hi there, and welcome back. Now that SketchUp 2025 is released, we have a lot of new visualization options right in SketchUp. We've got reflective materials, we've got all kinds of cool stuff. Um, basically, that comes in through the PBR, the physically based rendering materials, and you see all the nice new materials right here on, on the right, as well as the environments, and they're just down there. Now, while all of that is great, um, reflections are a little tricky, especially if we're talking about indoor reflections. And there's a easy workaround that's a, you know a little <laughs> uh, trick, but um, it works pretty well on indoor scenes. And you can see it right here in action, where we have a nice subtle reflection of the furniture in the floor, right there. And I'll show you in a second how that is done. Don't forget to check out my book, Architectural Design with SketchUp. It covers all of these topics and makes for a great desk reference. You can find it where books are sold. There's also a link to it on my site, sketchupfordesign.com, together with lots of additional tutorials and news. All right, let's get going. So before I get started, let me show you a little bit of what we have now with SketchUp 2025, which is, of course, our PBR materials. And so now you can see here, how the TV has a glossy reflection. The floor actually has that too. It's all built in. And then if I look at my materials, especially the floor right here, and I go to the edit tab, I can see that now we have uh, roughness. Uh, there's, you know, even some normal, basically bumpiness um, in there. And, and all of those are now part of the materials and all the materials that ship with SketchUp actually have that built in, which is really great. And so now um, that is all built in. And let me zoom out a little bit. Now I've got an exterior model here too, where we have our window panes that should of course reflect something. And um, those also use PBR material at this point. Uh, now there's nothing to reflect <laughs> at this point. And this is where all the, all the environments come in. And in principle, what we can do in the new system now is we can apply an environment. And once we do that, we get two things. We get basically this 360 degree sky dome where we can kind of pan around and we actually have a background that um, looks great once you have a little bit more here in the foreground, obviously. But you can see very nicely how the sky is being reflected in the windows. Now, just as a bit of a background here, we can now also in the um, environments go into the edit tab and we can change a few things so for example we can turn off the sky dome at that point we've got uh, we, we've got our modeling environment but all the materials will reflect and so now this exterior window that i have here shows a really nice sky reflection and that's a that's a great new feature obviously same also by the way for all of these materials but these are a little bit duller so you won't see much of a uh, reflection on there Anyway, so there's that. And um, then, of course, you can do all kinds of things here with these new um, uh, environments. You can have it set the sun location, which is great. So it basically presets the sun location based on this little hotspot that's right in the, in the 360 panorama. Then you can rotate the whole thing, at which point, you know, of course, the sun rotates and so on and so forth. So, so there's all of those options there. And in principle, they work really well for exterior. So exterior, you know, windows and the like that they that usually should give, you know, those models a really nice realism. When it comes to interior, it gets a little trickier because now if I'm on the interior, if I have a um, environment set, <clears throat> then I'm kind of hitting the limitations of, of that system where, you know, these environments reflect or basically these materials, the new PBR materials, they reflect the environment, but they are not able to reflect any kind of screen items or any model items. Anything that's here, like this furniture, doesn't get reflected in the floor. And, you know, the floor basically reflects <laughs> through the walls, uh, reflects the background and not the walls. So, so that is not overly realistic. And then um, you, you know, could try to... Um, switch this, for example, for uh, only Skydome. 
at which point, you know, if you had like a window, you could see a background and you actually can move around and you get that realistic parallax effect with a background. Now I don't have a window here, so I can't show it to you, but, but sky domes are basically these environments <clears throat> are um, useful for that. Now, let me turn the environment off because for our interior rendering, it's actually not that useful. Now, like I showed you earlier, you, you do get the material behavior, the reflectiveness and so on. There's a bit of a default and you know, a light that gets reflected. So there's that. But other than that, I'm not getting, you know, this is this is basically a glossy floor. I can't show it to you right now, but, but I'm not getting any kind of um, reflections of furniture items or walls or the like. But there's a trick. <laughs> and this is one of those old rendering tricks that we can dig out right here. Um, but, but it works really well. Okay, so what's the trick? The trick is basically <clears throat> take everything you have here. You know, all of that. And then you want to... Actually, wait, let me see if mine is grouped. Yeah, so mine is already grouped. But you can, you can then um, highlight that and, and group it. Um, you may want to make a component instead of a group because then you kind of retain your live editing capabilities, but, uh, you know, use as needed, basically. And then the idea is, well, I'm going to make a copy down here. I'm going to scale this as a minus one, or I'm going to use the flip tool. Up to you. And I'm going to do this here. So now when I do this, I have, uh, you know, <laughs> minus one copy, a flipped copy of what I have up here below the floor. And then I can go in, and I actually already did this on mine, but, but basically you want to then go in and pick your floor. Where's my floor? Right here. Floor texture, go to edit, and fiddle with the transparency because by default there's no transparency and that won't get any reflection right here but now if i just set that up a little bit and you know a little goes a long way on this one then i have all of a sudden something that looks like a reflection but technically i'm just looking at the space below but look at this here you can now move around in your modeling space and you get what I would call a realistic looking reflection right here in the modeling space. And, you know, you can move around. You can export this video, you know, all of those kind of things. So basically what I'm relying on here is, well, polygons are cheap. I can make a copy of my above ground scene, plop it below ground and create um, that effect that way. If you have a mirror on a wall, for example, you can do the same that way. Just copy the room as a negative behind it and, and set the mirror to a transparency and you get yourself a reflecting mirror because that's at this point the only way you can do these, you know, reflected objects within um, SketchUp's um, you know, modeling space. All right. Hope this gives you a bit of an overview of the question of reflectivity in the new SketchUp 2025 um, system. And this little workaround comes in quite handy every once in a while. All right. Hope this was useful. Let me know. Um, see you soon.